Marion Glendon has always been um, my greatest intellectual hero. I um, really credit her with kind of, um, you know, intellectually really sparking um, a, a, a kind of a interest in questions of, of political theory, um, questions of sort of anthropology, what it is to be human, and all of that. So when I read Wollstonecraft, knowing Glendon's work really well, it seemed to me, well, wow, these two are like sisters <laughs> in terms of their thought. And what's fascinating about it, and one of the things I argue in my book is, I mean, the basic gist is that Wollstonecraft kind of sets the frame for this lost vision, and then it carries through, um, you know, through the first and the second wave of feminism. And um, what I argue is, though there's many good things I have to say about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and we will get to that, um, there's a way in which the wrong turn uh, that happens in modern feminism um, it, you know, it could have um, been avoided had we instead followed the thought of Marianne Glendon. And um, Marianne Glendon, um, you know, best known as kind of ambassador um, to uh, the Vatican um, from the United States, also a learned hand professor of law, um, now emeritus at Harvard Law School. She um, kind of highest ranking uh, fee, you know, woman in the Catholic Church for a long time as the president of the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, an incredible scholar, um, which is why she held that position, um, worldwide uh, reputation as a comparatist lawyer. So someone who, if you can imagine, has sort of knows all the constitutional traditions of different types of um, nations and communities in her own mind and understands how they compare and contrast. Um, so really incredibly learned, um, became uh, also a, um, a great kind of scholar of human rights um, and uh, kind of both in the critique of rights and kind of a libertarian, real deeply libertarian notion of rights, which is when I first read her in terms of rights talk, but also really wanting to ground rights. She has a great book on um, the Declaration of uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So that's kind of her thought. So why do I put these two together? Well, certainly because there's an understanding in both of their thought that the work of the family, of the development of virtue, and um, um, in you know that parents do in children, that parents learn, and you know through that work um, in the home that it is the precondition for every other good. So for political freedom, for um, kind of civic harmony, for economic freedom, all of those things have to begin with these preconditions um, that start from the family. So from, for her, you know, her first love in some sense was family law, um, or, or uh, she wrote a, an award-winning book on the transformation of the family. Um, she has a book on abortion and divorce in Western law. And the reason why she's so important to the story and her scholarship is so important to the stories because she gets us to the other side of the Industrial Revolution.